<laughs> Mr. Red here. Today is August 22nd, 2020. And today I'm in Metairie, Louisiana. Yep, on the other side of the lake. And this video that we're shooting today is from Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph set all this stuff up. Wreck-It Ralph had uh, the lady contact him about these bees. In fact, he had pulled bees out of this very same spot uh, probably about last year, sometime last year. And another hive has moved in. And he told me last time, the bees, you can see where the bees are making their entrance right here. Last time their entrance was at, at this spot and this spot where he caulked them up. But they're going through the weep holes, as you can see. And uh, this is now their new entrance right here. And I mean, these bees are rocking and rolling. I mean, they, I see them coming in loaded with pollen right now. And uh, when Ralph came out here about three weeks ago and shot it, he said there was a little cluster, a little on his flare, about that big. We shot it this morning and the whole wall is now full. So this, this hive is just really growing fast. Um, it's, a, it's a really large, well, not really large, but it's, it's large and healthy. Just judging from the flare and the number of bees that, that we're seeing right here. It's eight o'clock in the morning and these girls are really flying right now. We're gonna go inside where Ralph is now setting up our, all of our equipment and we're gonna go ahead and show you the FLIR, where these girls are on the FLIR and the conditions of what, what's inside, but it should all make for a good, good, interesting video. By the grace of God, these bees, they're going home with Ralph and Ralph's gonna be setting them up, I believe, in, in his neighbor's yard, setting them up over there in Ponchatoula. Let's get inside and wrangle some bees, huh? Oh yeah, we got Charlie here too. Charlie's, <laughs> Charlie's on the camera right now. Watch me knock these bees off my face. <laughs> right. right, let's get out and get inside. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is get Ralph to show us what the bees look like uh, on the FLIR. You can see where they're marked off in the wall right here. Golly, and judging from all those bees outside, there's going to be a lot of bees inside. That's a big signature. Ooh. It fills up this entire space and it's a four inch wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out because Ralph still can't do any of the work. So I'll cut this out and we'll expose those bees. So we're getting ready to make our cut just using a utility tool right here. And, and you notice whenever we do the cutouts that I always like to work around a window that's open. And the reason, the reason I do this is because when we open up this wall, you can have a lot of those bees just come out. And generally you would think that there's gonna, the bees will be flying all around the, the room and stuff. That's not the case. The bees are gonna go to a source of light, of natural light. And so that's where they're gonna go, right to this window right here. You can have a few of them flying around in, in the room, but for the most part, they're all gonna go right to this window tried to take off the, the blind right there, but it was kind of difficult, so we just have to work around that. The other window in this room, it's closed right now. This, the blinds are closed, so all the bees, they're gonna come to this window, this open window right now. So let's go ahead and open this up. Well, a quick one, Charlie. Wow. There it is. Wow, we that clear did not lie. Slabs of comb. And there's probably only two slabs. Look at that brood right there in front of us. Wow. This queen, she's something else. These bees are seriously healthy. We only did a little bit of damage pulling the sheetrock off, but I, I felt that 
comb attached to the back of that sheet rock. But as I was looking through here, I was noticing there, there's not a whole lot, but there's several drones walking around in here. And here we are at the end of August, and you would expect to, to see fewer drones, and that's typically what, what you would normally see, and this hive is showing exactly that. I counted, just glimpsing at this, about 10 or 12 of them, just walking around on this surface right here. And then there's a few on this one as well. Let's go. So we've now removed the first slab of comb. That beautiful, beautiful comb. And man, this, this laying pattern is so beautiful. You can see like an arch right in here. And this was at one time honey stores and where the queen laid it, her eggs in this part and then below it right here and then honey stores down at this area. And then all of this comb down here, look, this is I find kind of surprising. This is all drone comb. All that is drone comb, cap drone comb. And I don't usually see that at this time of year. But all this is all drone. And then you can see as it moves up, it goes into the worker comb. So we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom half of this slab and keep working our way up. Now you'll notice at the top, I left that layer of honey up there. And the reason I, I cut the comb at that point, because if I would have cut it above much higher than that, all that honey would have been running down on our brood. So we minimized that. And we left the bees, all these bees right here, to go ahead and, and suck up that honey. Because they'll, they'll close all that stuff up, and then we'll be able to remove that after we get the big piece of, of comb out. So I just try to minimize that, that honey seepage onto our comb and let the bees work for us and <laughs> work for themselves too because they, they all know something's going on so they're, they're ganging up all the honey, they're storing it up because they know something bad is going to happen and they'll be able to start again somewhere but we're going to give them all this comb back and probably wind up feeding these girls too because as many bees as we have here and all that brood I still haven't seen the stores to justify all of that. So these bees are going to have to get fed. Very impressive. So we're going to do a little bit more vacuuming and then we're going to cut this bottom section out.
we've removed now oh you know most of that slab comb there's still the the honey sections that I've left in here and we're going to be removing that right now as well and we'll put that in a separate bucket and this area right here right here that's the hive, the entrance to that hive. That's where the bees are coming into the building right there. You can see the bees pouring into that. We still have a lot of bees, and I saw a cluster of them run back there. We have our honey bandit with us today, thankfully. So we'll, we haven't seen the queen yet. So she's still in here, but we'll spray that honey bandit, and we'll, we'll pretty much guarantee we're going to see her. She may be up there. They don't, they're not supposed to do that. They're on the march. I don't see her up there. We're gonna, we're gonna, she yeah. might be behind that picture. I'm telling you. They, yeah, they don't do that. Evil, no. There you go, So, we've now removed as much comb as I can. We've got still scraggler bees, but the wall, the brick from the, from the blackboard, you've got about a four inch gap in between there. And there are some bees in there. So I'm gonna spray the honey bandit on this side. There is no comb on this side. However, on this side right here, there's a big section of comb behind all this wall in the next section. And I can't get it right now um, because there's so many bees on it. So I'm going to, after I spray on this side and run the bees out this way, after those bees come out, then I'll spray it on this side and let the bees run out this way. And then hopefully we still got a big cluster right underneath here that I can't tell. So, I mean, I'm still very confident our queen is still here. We just haven't found her. So we're going to go ahead and shoot the honey bandit on this side back in the bees that come out when those subside get the, when I get all those vacuumed up then I'll switch over shoot her on this side and let those bees run out this way as well vacuum them hopefully I think she's going to be on this side because there's a big piece of comb and a lot of bees back there so let's see what it finds out what happens
Yeah. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I, I told Ralph, I said, Ralph, that queen's butt is going to be so big that even Charlie could see it. And he did see it. Four feet back, he saw it. Man, she's a big girl. That, <laughs> that was a battle. All right, so we're going to finish vacuum up these bees and, oh my gosh, try to wrap this video up. Woo. We got to get down, Ralph. Yeah. Get it. Are we all in it? See if we're all in there. I can't hey, see. It's good. Got to fix Ralph's hair. <laughs> okay. Let's we see. all in there? Uh, top of his head. Got to come up with the camera a little bit. Just a little bit. Right there. Okay. Okay. I can't see it, so. I can't either. I'll, I'll see it. It's good. Yeah, we're good. Go ahead. Well, folks, <laughs> here's the, uh, the bees are in the box. Uh, Charlie says it's 35 to 40,000. I bet you it's close to 30. It is a lot of bees in there. And it took us a while to do it. Charlie says we're only going to be here two hours. He always says two hours. <laughs> But this one, we were here for a little bit longer than two hours. <laughs> but we're done now. So, Charlie, what you got to say? It was a, it was quite a challenge. Ralph, what about you? How, how about you? I know, I know you had a lot to do on this one, besides procuring the job and, and uh, setting everything up. I said, we got it. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Ed. Charlie. And Wreck-It Ralph. We're on until the we're next video. God bless. <laughs> Good, guys. We got it.